Welcome back. Joining me in the studio is the mayor of Brockville, Matt Wren. And I have some questions for him, and I'm sure he's going to give us some answers. I'll do my best, Doreen. You will do your best. I know you will. I can always count on you to tell me straight out Thank you. how it is. Okay. <laughs> A lot of things have been happening over the last few months. I mean, you've had to deal with budget and all sorts of things happening here in Brockville. Let's talk about... Uh, what there was a little upset with the um, Brockville Operatic Society as well as the Brockville Theatre Guild. Is it because of miscommunication? Well, uh, first of all, we've we've come to a solution on, on uh, that <laughs> issue. It was about the lease of the Music Centre space. Mm. It was not about a lot of money. Yeah. It was about around six thousand dollars. That was uh, the centre of uh, of the whole conversation. And. Uh, I guess, you know, uh, I, I don't want to be critical of anyone, but no, no, I wish no, no. that the two organizations would have reached out to council back in February when this whole matter of the renewed lease came to council. We didn't hear from anybody. And, you know, staff information to us was that this lease had been worked out with the two organizations and uh, not hearing that there were any problems. Council approved it. We were right in the middle of budget. So yes. uh, everyone's focus was on that. And it wasn't until June until the two organizations reached out to me and members of council saying they weren't happy with this lease that we knew there was any problem. Okay. And we did go to work. I, I invited uh, both the presidents in for a meeting at City Hall right after hearing from them. Yes. We were working on some solutions and all of a sudden it became a newspaper story. So we were trying to sort it out. We really were. And mm -hmm. we don't want to see either of those groups uh, um, harmed financially or oh, no, no. Uh, you know, we, we believe in their mission. Mm -hmm. uh, we all support the arts. That's why we've created a, a, a cultural services department in the city. Um, I'm just happy it's all solved. Good. Good. Well, the other thing we have to remember too, and the reason why I said communication is because uh, different organizations, there's different people. And you know that yourself with, with, with dealing with organizations that, you know, one president comes in and uh, the person you've been dealing with is no longer here or whatever. So there, there's always a multitude of, of reasons as to why. Absolutely. But I am so happy that, yes, everything is sure. okay now. You know, we had a really great meeting yeah. uh, with uh, the two presidents a week or so before it came to committee for mm -hmm. uh, for approval and now yeah. it will be ratified I'm sure by council next week um, but in that you know we both admitted that um, things could have been done differently on both sides and uh, we all decided to focus on the future yes. be positive and move forward and exactly that's what we're doing that's what it's all about yes. and and you know it, it communication is huge yes. miscommunication is also huge. Exactly. So by, you know, we we deal with emails and and uh, technology. Sometimes it's just nice to pick up the phone and say, I'm sorry, I don't understand this. Yes. Please explain to me. Absolutely. You know, yes. like you coming in today, it's I would rather you be here as opposed to on Zoom or on a phone so that we can uh, we can talk about this. Um, the Brockville Arts Center. Um, what I don't understand what's happening there. Uh, it, it's me. It's it's. I'm sure there's other viewers too. Like I was looking forward to a summer series mm -hmm. through the price decks, right? And it didn't happen. Yeah. Well, to Please start tell with, me, yeah, uh, what's going on with the Broadville sure, Arts Center? Sure. Uh, well, we've asked the Arts Center staff to come to committee uh, in October okay. uh, to tell us about um, their change in direction and strategy. You know. Council approves the budget for the Arts Centre, um, and uh, that's about the extent of Council's involvement in what goes on there. Council, uh, and this isn't a change under my administration, yeah. no Council has ever been directly involved in what shows are, are taking place. Oh, so no, that's no, a no. staff yes, decision, yes, a yes, management yes. decision. Mm -hmm. So it seems that um, the staff uh, decided to take a little bit of a different direction. Okay. It looks like there's less going on at the Arts Centre because the summer series didn't happen and because films aren't happening right now. And we can yes. talk about that in a second. Yes. Um, but when you look at the number of shows that uh, the Arts Centre will host this year, um, I think I heard that, um, you know, Pre-COVID, it was about 45, and this year mm -hmm. it's going to be about 41. There's more programming on the shoulder seasons of spring uh, and, and fall uh, without that part in the center. But, you know, we've heard loud and clear from the community that, you know, we're a tourism center. Why isn't there things going on at the Arts Center in the summer? So we're going to have that discussion. But, okay. but one thing that maybe the community doesn't realize is that uh, before COVID, there were four full-time staff 
that worked at the art center. Okay. And with the way things got shuffled around with staff and so forth yes. coming out of COVID, we only have two full-time staff. So there's only so much capacity as well. And council's going to have to have a look at that in budget 24 um, to make sure that we have the staff there to provide the programming that the community is looking for. Okay. All right. Because, yeah, I've been waiting for movies. I've been waiting for, you know, the Price Deck series because they always select a, a great series. And mm. it didn't happen. And yeah. I thought, what is going sure. on here? Well, uh, you know, the summer's gone now and the message has been yeah. heard loud and clear. Yeah. Um, certainly this fall is some very wonderful programming coming, including uh, uh, the Glenn Miller Orchestra and mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, an operatic society production, a theater guild production and other productions. Yes. Um, they're also moving a little bit away during, uh, there was quite a trend to the tribute type shows. Yes. And staff were telling me when I met with them that um, that's everywhere now and, yeah. and they wanted to be a little different. They wanted a more for quality than quantity. In fact, they said that uh, it was kind of telling when Jan Arden came mm -hmm. um, earlier this year, late last, they're actually getting phone calls asking, is it the real Jan Arden? Yeah. Because they become so known for the <laughs> tribute yes, shows, right? Yes, And yeah. so staff felt, um, and, and you know, they're the professionals, that it was time to change the direction a little bit. So they're willing to come and chat with, uh, with a committee of council. They'll be getting lots of questions and they'll explain their strategy. Good. And if council feels that their directions maybe you know, need to be recalibrated wall, yeah. a little bit, then we'll <laughs> yes. be able to have that conversation. Okay. All right. And um, so, yeah, so um, uh, for myself and, and few of our viewers, we like the movies. They were always you know, choosing good movies. I'll just touch on that. The, uh -huh. the projector, um, unfortunately, and, and staff have researched it, uh, the particular model of a projector was one that the manufacturer ended up discontinuing because oh, it was no. a problem, uh, apparently. Oh. And so uh, we approved in this year's budget the replacement of that projector. Um, there's been a little bit of delay in the procurement process happening, but that's underway now. Good. And hopefully the new unit will be in place very soon. Yes. Yes. See, there's always an answer. We just have to ask. Absolutely. You happy got to, it. Happy to give the answers when I have them. <laughs> <laughs> Paratransit. Yes. And um, I understand that for the transit system that is in, not para, but for the transit system that's in place right now, mm -hmm. that's going in-house. Well, the existing transit system is in-house. We, The city of Brockville <gasps> but, has operated, but paratransit operated separately. Oh, that's, yes, right? okay, I'm sorry, and, I was confused. Uh, that's Thank okay. You. Uh, in the last number of years, uh, that's been a contracted out service. Yes. So um, there are rules about uh, when you're spending public money uh, that you can't just forever have a contract with uh, with a contractor. Every so often, you've got to go back to the market. Right. So the contract with the existing provider is is uh, is concluding at the end of this year. There's no way to just extend it anymore. Any extensions have been used up. Okay. So we'd be required to go back out to tender. Um, but before staff did that, they came to council and said, "Would you like us to show you what it would look like for the Brockville Transit System to operate?" paratransit under one roof. Yes. And council unanimously said, yes, we'd like to see that. Of course. Nobody two or three months ago said, no, I really want to do the RFP. We yeah. all wanted yeah. to see what we could do uh, because Rockville Transit is you know, well used mm -hmm. and, uh, and people are very happy with the service they receive by and large. Um, and we felt if we can operate one type of buses, we can operate well, another likely. Okay. So now staff have come back and it is realistic for uh, Rockville Transit to operate it. It's a cost savings. Yes. Um, one of the things that's been missing is that the dispatcher position was eliminated by the current contractor. We're going to put that back okay. so that when you call to book your ride, right. um, you'll be talking to someone whose job it is to book your ride. A uh, right? real person. Re well, you get a real person now, but you're getting one of the drivers who's trying to drive somebody <laughs> yeah. and take your reservation at the same time, which right. is a little much to expect of, of those folks. It's not safe. Yeah. Um, so uh, we've, we've, we're ready to, to bring it uh, to be an in-house service in January. We are very committed to keep this service, uh, to enhance this service if okay. we can. Uh -huh. And we're very committed to make sure that it's a seamless transition for the people who use the service. We talked about some different vehicles. So right now it's a, a great big bus, the same as our city buses. All right. And stats show that there's generally only a couple people per ride. So you question, why do you need this great big gas guzzling bus? 
for one or two people. And we're looking at going to um, a converted uh, minivan built especially for this purpose, lower floor. Oh, that, that the, would make more sense. There's yeah. a little bit of a, of a ramp, but it's almost yeah. on the level yes. uh, because of the lowered uh, floor. Yes. Um, and it'll be more comfortable uh, than a big noisy bus. It'll be much more fuel efficient. We're going to go to hybrid buses. Mm -hmm. So we'll do our part to help the environment. Right. But the, the 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 little benefit here, because we operate a transit system, we're about to get two new buses for Brockville Transit. Mm -hmm. We keep the existing buses for backup. They're the same vehicle as paratransit uses. So for the person or the situation where we need a bus version of paratransit, we've got one. Good. And so the bus Good. with the lift yes. that will hold more people will still be available when it's needed. So there it's, we are. Yeah, perfect. I love the explanation. Love it. Um, Blue Box transition period, that is happening in a couple of years, is it not? Yeah, so this is a provincial uh, direction, not something the city of Brockville has decided, yeah. nor do we have any control over it. No. But basically what's happening is right now, you and I, the taxpayer, mm -hmm. pay about a million dollars a year to pick up the recycling. Just the recycling. We yes. pay more than that to pick up the garbage, garbage. too. Mm -hmm. So um, the province decided a few years ago that that shouldn't be the municipal taxpayer's responsibility to get rid of all this recycling. It should be the producers of that material's responsibility to get rid of the recycling. So across Ontario, over a several year period, they're transitioning municipality by municipality to a producer uh, operated system of managing our recycling. So um, January 2026 is when Brockville moves to that uh, direction. We don't know exactly what What's that's going to look like, like right yeah. now. There's mm -hmm. a central organization uh, in the province that, that is responsible for being the intermediary between municipalities and producers to yes. make it all happen. Mm -hmm. And there's other municipalities around us that have already started to transition. So we're going to watch what happens with them, uh, <laughs> see what the best practices are that exactly. come out of that, yeah. hopefully avoid mistakes that got made in other uh, places, which is invariable. Mm -hmm. um, but there was this uh, motion last night uh, at council and we felt that, or at committee, we felt it would be best to uh, make sure the community understood nothing's changing right now. But we will have to change. Uh, there will be some changes in 2026. Yeah. We're going to make sure that there's ample information and notification and all that good stuff uh, before anything happens. But there was this opt-in, opt-out of us entering into a contract with this producer organization for the transition period. And um, uh, a provincial association in the waste handling uh, mm -hmm. uh, business had a legal analysis of this contract done. And their recommendation was this wasn't good for municipalities. It was going to increase costs during this transition period, yes. put costs back on municipalities that the producers are supposed to be paying. Right. And it was recommended that we opt, opt out. out. Now, that doesn't mean your recycling is not going to get picked no, up no, between now and then. Yeah. Status quo. Mm -hmm. But we got to start looking at some other things, too. And the other uh, topic last night was a presentation by a company that makes a little countertop um, unit that turns your food waste into compost, yes. into soil you can plant your flowers yes. in. Um, it's a really interesting uh, little process. They told us that the average household produces 600 pounds of food waste per year, if you can imagine that. And wow. this, this shrinks that down into soil that you can spread on your lawn or put in your gardens. In other words, it essentially could keep 600 pounds of waste out of our uh, solid waste pickup. And those costs have really escalated for municipalities. Yes, yes. Plus our landfills are filling up. They and are indeed. We've yeah. got to find better ways to deal with that material. So it, will the um, the council, are they looking into this? Are the staff yeah. looking into this to see whether it's it's worth well, we, um, it, it, proceeding? What's offered to us is a pilot project that would only cover a few hundred households, but okay. it's something. And so we've asked staff, because there would be a cost involved that we haven't budgeted for. Right. We've asked the staff to bring us back a report on okay, if Brockville wants to do this, what would it look like? Yeah, exactly. Now, you can buy these units yourself today mm -hmm. um, through retailers and so forth. So it's not that you have to wait for the city to do this if you want to do it. It's just a little more expensive for you to get it yourself than what this pilot program yes. would look like. Yeah. So we're investigating and we'll see I, what I like happens. that. I like that. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for sitting down with me today. Anytime, I really, Doreen. really appreciate it. And, uh, and that goes both ways. If you've got something you want to discuss, we can discuss it and make sure that our viewers are aware of what's happening in Bronxville. Thank you. So thanks, Matt. Always happy to do it.